This might be the most damaging advice she has ever given. She is teaching people how to not establish boundaries correctly, how to get raped by their boyfriends. That's the biggest issue. She is teaching people how to go into a relationship, into a consenting relationship, and still get raped. You're encouraging men to become rapists. You tell a woman she's got red, yellow, green. She uses yellow every time because she doesn't want to upset her man's feelings. And you tell that man what red, yellow, green means, he hears red, green, green. That's all he hears. Red, green, green. This is how you make a generation of men into rapists, by the way. Because this is how you make a generation of women who can't say no. If having sex is going to risk traumatizing you because you don't understand what consent is, then stop having sex. Oh my god, her thumbnail game is improving. The thumbnails are back on form. Her thumbnails are fully back on form. Look at these top tier drama baiting thumbnails for this educational channel. He did what in court? Makeup and Q&A? Live get ready with me Q&A 40 plus. Oh, look at this educational chat. He appealed. This is so educational. That sounded a lot better in my head. So we are twice professionally diagnosed with dissociative identity disorder. <laughs> We are somebody who's been professionally diagnosed twice. That's who we are. I'm somebody with two diagnoses. Read them and weep. I have no personality. I have no, no, like, existence or being outside of my diagnosis. I am somebody with two diagnoses, though, guys. And that means that within this one body, there are a lot of different people. Collectively, we're known as a system. If I'm speaking about everyone in this one body, I'm going to use the term we. We haven't counted for a while, but in this body, we have more than 40 different personalities, different alters. Alongside raising awareness and giving as much information as we can on how to live with the disorder, what it's like to live with the disorder, and why it's not as scary as everybody makes it out to be, while still being a complex disorder stemming from repeated childhood trauma, and we go into detail about that as well, we're very open about our life. And a lot happens in it all the time. <laughs> we often hear from people who follow us, you just can't catch a break. And <laughs> it's true. We cannot catch a break. <laughs> so I'm not. She's so self-pitying. Wow, her new upbeat channel intro is why me, poor me, why me? I think that's not that funny. <laughs> If you follow us, trust me, it will not get boring. There is always something going on. I thought you said you were an educator. You're a drama channel. Admit it. Now you're talking about the drama. Yeah. Is any of this sounding interesting to you? If this is sounding interesting to you, please like and subscribe. Make sure you click the little... Aren't I interesting for being mentally ill? Isn't that interesting, guys? <laughs> Please click the bell button if you are interested in learning about this disorder, in learning about us, and getting to meet the other people who do exist in this body. All of us work together as well as we can, or the majority, okay. Some of us work together as well as we can. We don't all get on to raise awareness and validation for as many people and other systems as we possibly can. We're very dedicated to making a difference, a positive difference in the world. We talk about trauma. We all get along, except when we don't. It's just like a sitcom round here. Ha ha ha. This is not a fun disorder. We've been through trauma and abuse that started from when we were a toddler all the way through. We have yet to have a year that is completely free. Let's go! Let's go! You've never had a year of your life completely free of trauma? Tell me about it! I want to hear all about the rape! I'm kind of trauma and abuse. The 20 social media I was watching Chud Logic's breakdown of the uh, Mr. Girl manifesto on Destiny. He's been reading it. What a, what a good boy. He's been going through it all. So he's, he's, he's now been reading for like a solid seven hours or something. It's taken him so long. I am definitely not reading it on stream. It's, it's, average, it's average reading length is six and a half hours. It's average spoken length is nine and a half hours. <laughs> so if you want to listen to it, just watch Chud's streams or otherwise read it. But like watching those streams just has me in a funny mood. <laughs> Where just everything is rape right now. Everything, you know. Everything is rape. Hello. But for now, I'm going to eat some food and we're going to fucking... We're going to learn eight tips for physical intimacy after sexual trauma and abuse. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video by Dissociated. Today is going to be a little bit of a different video. When it comes to things like physical intimacy, it's kind of a taboo subject, right? I think that's dumb. I th
Chat timestamps, uh, identify needs, safe words, safe positions, grounding, timeline, triggers, alters, Kaya's message, you are safe. Guys, what's missing ready from this? Oh my, me, a micro, micro, you know what's really funny as well? She found, she figured out the timestamps. She could have just cop, all she had to do was copy that text there and paste it into the description. When you do timestamps, all you do is you copy and you write the timestamp in the description and it automatically adds the timestamps into the video. It automatically does it. It's so easy. That's so dumb. <sighs> I think that's stupid. I think that needs to change. But guys, what's not there? Oh, Clary, you got it. You got it. Consent, 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 trip. Throw, Clary, you all got it. Yep, consent. You don't have a chapter on consent. I think that by making discussions around physical intimacy and especially safety around physical intimacy, when we think about how many people, especially women, are subject to sexual violence, it's regular. The numbers are huge. I don't know why it isn't being talked about and why the healing and recovery side of things aren't being talked about. I think that by shaming people for talking about sex or recovery and physical intimacy in relationships after trauma, we are stopping people from healing as well and as quickly as they could do. If there was more openness, more people would feel comfortable coming forward and saying, yeah, this happened to me. It wasn't okay. I want to heal from it. Is there anyone out there like me? Yes, there is. So today what we wanted to do is talk about recovering from sexual trauma and rediscovering sexual intimacy in a safe way, how to do it. We're not gonna be going into anything that's sexy <laughs> or anything that's explicit. What I am gonna do is give you advice that has worked for our system and that we have given to other trauma survivors, people who are and aren't systems, and it has worked for them as well. Discuss introduce yourself Guaranteed. to positions of intimacy or being intimate with other people without having flashbacks, hopefully, or by using techniques that will reduce the likelihood and hopefully the intensity of any triggers that you might experience. Now, before I say anything, please keep in mind, I'm not a sex therapist. I'm not an expert. All I can do is tell you from my experience and from things that I have told other people that they have then tried and has helped them that I hope that this helps you. If it doesn't, or at any point you're trying some of these and it does not feel right, stop. And I can only give advice that I think will be helpful for you. And I really, really hope it is. But if this is not right for you, that doesn't mean you're broken. It just means that our traumas, our brains, our bodies, whatever, are working in different ways, or we're at different stages in our healing, or we're with different partners, whatever. It doesn't matter. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you, and that is okay. That means you're fucked up, mate. You're fucking broken. <laughs> will be something that works for you, okay? Don't push yourself. This video can be used both by people who have experienced sexual trauma or partners of people who have experienced sexual trauma. In fact, I'd recommend both of you watch this video. These are my tips. <laughs> Tip one is figure out what you need. It might not be what you think you need. And it Why might the weird fake laugh? Yeah, these are my tips. <laughs> Tip one. <laughs> There's no mirth. Who have experienced sexual trauma. In fact, I'd recommend both of you watch this video. These are my tips. <laughs> Why? Tip one is figure out what you need. It might not be what you think you need, and it might not be what most people will think to somebody who's been traumatized intimately. A lot of people assume that if you're dealing with somebody who has- How do you figure out what you need? What do you mean figure out what you need? What does that mean? What does that mean? Experience that the right or only way forward is gentleness. For some people, gentleness in bed can be triggering in itself. When people think about sexual trauma, a lot of people only think about very violent illustrations of it. While all sexual trauma is violent, that doesn't mean that it's always aggressive. Oh God, this is so true. She's going, she's so retarded. Why is she talking about this? Why is she talking about this already? What the fuck is? No mention. What the? Why, why is she going here already? For some people, and not why is she already talking about how gentle fucking can be triggering? Maybe you got to figure out what you need. You got to figure out what you want. You got to figure it out. So maybe you do want really hard dick, and if you do want the really hard dick, and the gentle fucking is triggering you, yeah, that's my advice. Figure out what what way you want to be fucked. You, the virgin. Or the, you, the woman who has only had one sexual partner in your life, maybe, and was otherwise raped as a kid. What kind of sex do you want? Yeah. You who have never orgasmed in your life. You who doesn't even finger yourself, probably. What kind of sex do you want? Figure it out. Just figure it out. Easy. Every fucking woman I fucked has no fucking clue what she wants. They can't figure it out. How do you just figure it out? You figure it out through practice, through experience. How do you get to that practice and experience? Well, first you have to have the conversations about consent and getting there first. Oh my God, back to front.
Not all gentleness in bed can be triggering. Affection in bed can be triggering. Soft spoken or whispered words can be triggering. Also, before I go any further, trigger warning. This is gonna be discussions of intimacy, potential triggers, or things that could be triggering to you. Again, I'm not going into anything specific. I'm not going into anything detailed. If you feel uncomfortable, make a note of why you feel uncomfortable, especially if you do want to try some of these things so that you know, don't go there. Okay, okay. Whispering or hushed words can be triggering. Communicate with your partner. Talk to your partner and figure out every possible trigger. Make sure your partner knows every possible trigger before you ever first have sex. Figure out what kind of sex you enjoy. Do it. If they give you boundaries, trust them, listen to them and stick to them, even if it doesn't make logical sense to you. That's the same for you if you are the person. And what if they don't? Person who has experienced a difficult past. Even if it doesn't make logical sense to you, if it doesn't feel comfortable, if it doesn't feel right, stop. There is no right way to recover. There is no right way to enjoy sex or sexual intimacy, okay? If it feels wrong or uncomfortable, that doesn't mean that you're wrong, okay? It doesn't mean that you're the source of the discomfort. It means that this isn't right for you and that's okay. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Listen to- I think there's a lot of women who do need to hear this message right now, to be fair. A lot of women put themselves into uncomfortable positions of sex, thinking that they should, that that's what's expected of them. The amount of women, as they say, who never achieve orgasm until their 30s, it's because they're having sex with guys, not really knowing that sex should be about them as well as the guy, you know? Um, <laughs> like, I'm sure plenty of you could probably call upon personal experiences of times when you've had sex, especially when you were younger, where you really didn't want to, you really weren't enjoying it, but you were going along because that's what you sort of thought you had to. And you didn't know how to express your boundaries. She's not actually telling us how to express boundaries, though. Somebody's trying to push your boundaries. You have to express your discontent. You have to express no. You have to say no in the same way you would say no if they were asking you if they could fuck your cat. If somebody was, if your boyfriend is in bed and you don't like what he's doing with you, you know, don't just say, oh, not now, babe. Oh, not right now, babe. Not right now. Because if your boyfriend was like, hey, babe, I'm just going to go stick my penis inside of your cat, inside of your pet dog, you wouldn't go, oh, not right now, babe. Maybe a bit later. Stop, babe. Stop. No, not right now. Would you? To what your body is telling you, don't push it. Second tip is decide on safe words and hear me out. Just hear me out because I know where some of you, where some of your thoughts are going to be going. And I promise, <laughs> hear me out, okay? Decide on safe words. Yes, even if it's just foreplay. And now we're straight into safe words. Safe words don't matter. We're talking about people with trauma and stuff. Safe words don't matter. What if dissociated? I'm not talking from a personal place here about people with DID. How's a safe word going to work when you switch? How's a safe word going to work when you invisibly, subtly switch mid-fuck? You're not going to remember, but you're going to switch. You're not going to... You're going to come to some person who might effectively be a stranger to you if it's not an altar that's fronting very often is now, as far as you're concerned, raping you. You're probably going to say nothing. That's how that part of you is effectively being programmed to behave. What, what then? You're not going to say the safe word. You're going to find yourself traumatized and raped by a partner that you actually love because of your trauma. That's going to destroy your relationship and fuck you two up. Safe words aren't enough. Safe words aren't enough for people with PTSD. Safe words only work for healthy people. Safe words are great in neurotypical sex. But when you're dealing with people with PTSD, safe words very rarely work. I was like, I have, I always have safe words with my, like, I always have safe words with my partners. Don't get me wrong. I always have a safe word rather with my partners. But, but stop should be enough. That's all. It's not about having safe words. Fuck. It's just this is related to a lot of other content I've been watching lately where I've seen a lot of other female content creators lately saying, oh, you need to have safe words and stuff. And it's like, but you don't use them. You don't even tell the guy no. Before you're talking about safe words, talk about consent and how to say no. 
talk about how to say no to a guy when you don't want to have sex. You say no the same way you say no to somebody that's trying to fuck your dog. You say, fuck off. No. No. Not not right now. Not I'm in an art. No. Put your fucking dick away. No. Or rough housing, or if it's just <laughs> vanilla. So many people. When you're having a bit of rough housing. Oh, we're going back to the 1920s to have a bit of foreplay and rough housing. When you're courting a dime, when you're courting a dame, and you're involving yourself with a bit of casual foreplay and rough housing, make sure to establish a safe word. People assume the safe words are only needed or used for rough sex or BDSM or pre-negotiated scenes. That's not true. If communicating something is difficult for you. No. Safe words are only used for that. What you're talking about, you don't need safe words. You just need no. Or a challenge for you. Safe words are a great way to be able to get that information across with one or two words. Even if... Nope. That's a maladaptive coping skill. If you can't say no to your partner and can only say a safe word instead, you need to stop having sex and grow the... F Stop acting like a retarded child. Literally. And say no. Even retarded children know how to say no. Fuck off. If you're in a triggered state. Even if you're in a flashback sometimes. One word is all you need to remember. And your partner will immediately... You have DID. You have a flashback. You switch. Just say your safe word though. You'll be fine. If you're having sex, um, this is going to be triggering, sorry, but imagine you're having sex with your partner and you just, something awful has happened during the day that you've not managed to bring up with the hubby. He doesn't know. You two are having sex. You switch. You're now full-blown child-brained, right? You're now fucking retarded child-brained. Are you going to say, remember a safe word that you and him had discussed at length Months prior? Or is retarded child brain just going to think it's getting raped? Sorry, I know this is brutal, but like... This fucking... I, this pisses me off so much. You know, upon hearing it, what it means, how you're feeling, what to do next, how to keep you safe, and also the level of urgency that's required. So pineapple sh No, sorry, I just said pineapple. <laughs> Safe words. <laughs> Revealed my safe word. <laughs> Pineapple should not be used that way dissociated. I mean, safe words should not be used that way dissociated. <laughs> Pineapple should not... <laughs> should not communicate an emotion it shouldn't communicate a feeling all it should communicate is stop that's all it says it says stop so that when you two are having consent non-consent bratty dom sex yeah where you're choking her out and she's fighting you and begging you to stop because that's what she enjoys, and that's what you enjoy a bit. When you're doing that, stop and no don't work. That's when stop and no don't work. And if you're doing something a little too hard, or she does want you to slow down or stop, pineapple, I mean safe word, comes out, and you stop. And you go, baby, you all right? Yeah, yeah, sorry, it was a little rough. Or so, Sorry, I just need to, I, I was just feeling a bit queasy i just needed a break oh, sorry i needed some fresh air or oh, sorry yeah that was getting a bit too much for me i just need a cuddle there could be so many reasons but pineapple doesn't convey the reason or the meaning all it means is stop because you're probably having sex where your partner can't say stop or she is saying stop but you know it doesn't mean stop because you've discussed beforehand that's when you need to just have consent. You discuss consent and then you talk about how you both enjoy hard sex and you talk about how maybe she enjoys saying stop, but she enjoys you trying to do it anyway. And 
maybe you're like okay but what if there's a time where you really want me to stop and she's like well i guess we'll need a safe word and you're like okay how about pineapple because if there's ever a pineapple in the bedroom something's going wrong you never want a pineapple in the bedroom pineapple what the fuck get that away from me know what i mean that's how you but you can only have a safe word if you've already discussed consent at length with your partner safe words don't work until you've heavily discussed consent safe words aren't meant to be used by people with trauma when they're getting accidentally triggered that's not what a safe word is for that's what growing the fuck up having some fucking self-determination and some authority over your own life is about Learning to say, no, babe, stop. This is real. Stop. I can't do this right now. I just need a hug. And if you can't do that, stop having sex. Done. You can't. That might be upsetting. That might be offensive. But I'm sorry, you're too immature, emotionally immature, to keep having sex at that point. That sounds brutal, but that is the case. If having sex is going to risk traumatizing you because you don't understand what consent is, then stop having sex. Some people who've experienced things like this immediately go into a dissociative state when they need to use the word no or stop. Some people feel... Some people immediately go into a dissociative state when they need to use the word no or stop. So saying a safe... Fuck off with this made up horse shit. Those people that can't say no or stop need to discover... Because there are people, I get it, they can't use that. They don't know how to say no or stop. But guess what? They shouldn't be having sex. They need to first go have, through therapy and learn how to say no or stop. If you can't say no or stop, don't have sex. Stop it. You're a child. You haven't learned the power of no yet. You're a retarded child. Don't have sex. Fuck. I hate this. This is literally... This is how you make a generation of men into rapists, by the way. Because this is how you make a generation of women who can't say no. And a generation of men who are a bit pushy and end up raping their girlfriends on accident. Because not every guy should. Like, too many guys end up raping someone on accident. But this is half the reason why it is a two-person dance. Those accidental rapes that occur so often, it's a two-person dance. It happens mo a lot of the time because of this. Trash tier advice to women, which teaches them how not to advocate for their own safety. Learn Krav Maga. Use safe words. <laughs> Extreme guilt for saying no or stop. Some people are scared to say no or stop because it's been ignored so many times in the past. Safe words can help you get around these issues. A really great and effective example that I would recommend using is the traffic light system. Imagine a traffic light if you're driving in a car, kind of one you'd see on the road. There's the red light at the very top, the amber, orange, yellow light, and the green light. We all know what all of those mean. For most people, you won't even have to think about it and that's what you want. You want an immediate understanding without somebody having to be like, huh, what does that word mean again? Or why are they saying that? What does that mean? You need something that's gonna be an immediate red. Shit, okay, stop everything now. So red is for stop everything immediately. Yellow or orange or amber or whatever you want to call it, you decide that. Wait, she wants people to have two safe words. Rather than just telling partner no or having a say, have two. With your partner means slow down, warning. It can mean check in, it can mean change the subject. You discuss what you want this to mean with your partner. Green is for carry on everything. Destiny, stop debating, lose a waste of space on fucking live streams who, who only have platforms with like a thousand or two thousand subscribers. And how about fucking go after this fucking piece of shit right here with her 1.17 million subscribers who is currently making an entire generation of young women absolute fucking rape bait. Everything's safe and okay. Safe words and systems like the traffic light system. Because Dissociated is in the kink community, Lex. She is bringing in the kink traffic light system while saying this. <sighs> may have been originally created for other yeah no no i get that yeah but that's you don't have the three tier fucking safe word system for just casual you know for vanilla she's talking about for you know what i mean like 
if you're having vanilla sex and you need a traffic light system, you shouldn't be having sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red is stop everything. Amber has stopped doing that. Green, go, 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 go. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that they can't be adapted for use outside of an intimate or sexual context. For example, you can use safe words in your daily life. You start to... But the, the problem is, she's talking about people who can't say no trip. Imagine a woman who can't say no with a young, pushy guy who doesn't know who when a woman says maybe later he hears she still wants it. You give that guy a yellow, he sees green. You give her a yellow, she uses yellow. You tell a woman she's got red, yellow, green, she uses yellow every time because she doesn't want to upset her man's feelings. And you tell that man what red, yellow, green means, he hears red, green, green. That's all he hears. Red, green, green. This isn't for people in kink communities. This is for fucking her baby brain child audience. ...during a conversation and you're unable to communicate that you're getting triggered. Or maybe the trigger comes on way faster than you realise and you're She's not... She's literally replacing clear-cut consent boundary lines on what f the power of no. Stop. She's replacing that, as you say, with a fucking wishy-washy two fucking three-tier system that... Oh, this is evil. I'm telling you, these people are just trying to make more people like themselves. And now she's taking it to the next level. First, she was just trying to do it by convincing a whole bunch of autists that they had DID. Now she's trying to do it by getting a whole bunch of autists that have been convinced into thinking they have DID to also get raped. For it. Just say or type red and your partner or whoever you're speaking to knows immediately that you're triggered and that something needs to stop now and to check in with you. Your partner you're speaking to so then you realize and you're not prepared for it. Just say or type red and your partner or whoever you're speaking to knows immediately that you're triggered and that something needs to stop now and to check in with you. Your partner will know immediately what to do without you having to explain or discuss. When you're in a tri Just say or type Red. Type. Is she talking about virtual sex here as well? Is she talking about a traffic light system for virtual sex? What is this? triggered state or you've started to dissociate, sometimes you can't explain. So being able to say one word and having all that information packed into there is very helpful. While they may not know the details of this specific situation, what they do know immediately is that this is an urgent situation that needs their full attention right now. All without you having to say anything else. One word, short, easy to say, easy to remember. The word and color red has been ingrained in most of us from an early age by society to mean stop and danger. Just like with traffic lights, warning signs, stop signs, all of them are red. Same with- So just make red your stop sign, oh my. Babe, your ass looks so fucking red and raw. Oh my god. You have such fucking... Oh my god. When I chew on your nipples, they go all pink and red. What? Red is a really common color to come up in the bedroom. No is quicker to say. Red is a really common color. With yellow, orange, or amber. Personally, I prefer to say yellow. I find it the easiest for my mouth to pronounce. She's such a fucking psychopath. She's retarded and a psychopath. This is so... This is damagingly, dangerously bad advice. When I'm in a dissociative state. If you're slurring your words and dissociating, orange can also be... Available in 4K. In this video, Kaya, with Mara and Mike, co-conscious at times, shares opinions and helpful suggestions on managing and navigating trauma responses developed from sexual trauma. These eight tips are taken from the results of our own experience and therapeutic work, which we hope you will find helpful. We are not mental health professionals, blah, 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 blah. Oh my God, somebody actually did timestamps for her. 
As an asexual with no trauma experiences, I still find this video very empowering. Oh, God. So that's a teenager who's going to get raped in their first sexual encounter. I have one about consent. Consider asking your partner to allow you to initiate sexual contact. I had a problem where I didn't feel safe saying no. And by allowing me to initiate, my boyfriend gave me so much freedom to feel safe engaging in sex. That's actually good advice. Try being the dominant one. Oh no, it's not. Just try being the dominant one when you're having sex. Hey woman, just try, just try taking command. How about you just try being the one to initiate? Just be the one to initiate, women. That is good advice, actually. Women, initiate sex more. There you go. Done. Problem solved. That's a problem that men have been trying to fix for a while now. Women, initiate sex more. Yeah. Oh, fuck me. Be easy to say and understand. Because even if you say orange, what orange? People are still going to be able to be like, orange, you know? But you figure out what works. If your safe word is orange, and you go, what? Orange. 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 No, that's not going to work best for you the important thing is that it can be easily that's why i said pineapple not red not yellow these are all sounds it has to be a clear word with several syllables it doesn't work it doesn't else it's just sounds or interactions in the heat of the moment fuck even when you're in a triggered state and easily understand no lex i disagree no 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 if well if somebody is wanting to sexually assault you it won't matter what you say but the problem is that's not the majority of rape the majority of rape is men being too pushy it just is this has been very heavily studied the majority of rapes are men being too pushy and women not knowing how to say no it is women saying, maybe later, uh, not right now, not right now. And then the guy just can't, he's like, oh, come on, babe. And she's like, mm. you know, it's the Andrew Callahan shit. And it is rape where you don't realize you were raped until a year has gone by, but it was a rape. They ignored your boundaries, but you also didn't establish your boundaries very well. She is teaching people how to not establish boundaries correctly, how to get raped by their boyfriends. That's the biggest issue. She is teaching people how to go into a relationship, into a consenting relationship, and still get raped. That's the problem. Stood by somebody else. Usually if you're in a situation where you feel like something is getting a bit close to triggering you or a bit uncomfortable, you have to stop and explain. I'm feeling uncomfortable right now because X, Y, Z, this is what I need. Hey, I just had a really good rant about rape though. You should have clipped that one as well, damn it. <laughs> Maybe we could do this, that, and the other, just in case. With safe words like yellow for slow down, warning, reassess, change the subject, you don't need to do any of that. No explanation needed. That means... With safe words like yellow, orange, reassess, warning... These are all words I might use whilst fucking someone. Maybe if you just have sex silently and never speak. Maybe if you don't like dirty talk, but... Every partner I've had enjoys guys that don't, like, guys get really awkward and embarrassed doing dirty talk, and every guy needs to fucking grow the fuck up on that and just get comfortable dirty talking because women are far more auditory beings, you know? A slow down, warning, reassess, change subject. You don't need to do any of that. No explanation needed. That means there's no risk or low risk of triggering yourself further by trying to explain. But, oh, that, yeah, totally agree that. Totally agree that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't be direct about what you do or don't want, you shouldn't be engaging in the activity in the first place. I agree. I totally agree. Totally agree. Because X, Y, Z, this is what I need. Maybe we could do this, that, and the other just in case. With safe words like yellow, yeah, but what if, slow down. What if you were a retarded child and you still want to have sex, but you don't know how to establish boundaries? Here's the video for you. Morning, reassess, change subject. You don't need to do any of that. No explanation needed. That means there's no risk or low risk of triggering yourself further by trying to explain, thinking about trying to. Reassess, 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 babe, yellow, orange, reassess, yellow, orange, reassess, orange, orange, amber, orange, yellow, reassess, reassess, reassess. <laughs> like, fuck. 
I'm fucking an android. This is kind of hot. I'm fucking her so hard that her AI is melting down. I'm like, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is hot. Reassess, reassess, yellow, orange, reassess. <laughs> Explain thinking about the situation that is triggering you in the first place. Your partner will immediately know what's going on and should react accordingly. Always discuss what each word means and what response. Destiny, I don't want you to react to this. I want Mr. Girl to react to this. I want Mr. Girl in her life. <laughs> you need when you hear someone else say them or when you said them another tip is that before you get into the bedroom before you do anything sexual he can fix experiment with positions in a safe and non-sexual manner fully closed just positions no heated atmosphere no sexy stuff nothing just normal vibes safe just positions if you feel fear discomfort, start to shut down or dissociate or panic, do not try and do that position in a sexual context. If you're reacting like that to that position outside of options, no heated atmosphere, no sexy stuff, nothing, just normal vibes, safe, just positions. If you feel fear, discomfort, start to shut down or dissociate or panic. Practice sexual positions fully clothed with your partner to figure out which ones. This is so, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we're on we're on tip three we've not had any mention of consent don't bring don't talk about consent with your partner just make sure the consent one is already fully figured out and then have 50 different safe words and then practice sex fully clothed to find your safe positions the body remembers the body holds the trauma no it doesn't grow the fuck up shut up shut up shut up experiment with positions in a safe and non-sexual manner fully closed just positions no he yeah let's just practice positions in a safe non-sexual manner <laughs> let's let's just fully clothed you know i'll just i'll just spread your legs rub against you fully clothed it's not sexual we're just trying to figure out is this tips for foreplay for traumatized people? Is this a foreplay tip for people with trauma? If so, based. Based as hell. Fair play. Heated atmosphere, no sexy stuff, nothing. Just normal vibes, safe, just <laughs> positions. If you feel fear... If you can dissociate to the point that you can rub your crotch fully clothed against your partner's crotch, even fully clothed, if you can dissociate to the point that that's not sexual at all, you're dissociating, you retard. That should be sexual. Fear, discomfort, start to shut down or dissociate or panic. Do not try and do that position in a sexual context. If you're reacting like that to that position outside of a sexual context, it is likely going to be a trigger for you. Don't push yourself to explain or remember why. All you need to know is that based on how you feel, it won't be a pleasant or enjoyable experience for you. Start to dissociate or get a bit confused or if you have the idea or osd you start to feel switchy you have familiar sounds in the background so you can be like i know that sound especially if it's a positive trigger for you to keep you in the front of you so that if you do and they don't have to be sexy playlists or whatever wait music, are we already done we're already done with positions keep you grounded make sure you've got preset playlists and they don't have to be sexy playlists or whatever music that you know is grounding that is familiar to you so that if you do make sure that you have music on whilst you fuck so you stay grounded is awful advice is awful advice how many people get grounded listening to music when they're fucking does that help ground you For me it always distracts me i hate music being on when i'm having sex i'm not the whole like play fucking sexy music when you're I'm fucking awful i fucking hate music on when create when having sex actually is such a good way to ruin sex in my opinion because if you're against the rhythm of the music it feels wrong if you're with the rhythm of the music, it feels cringe. It's lame. It's fucking shit. <gasps> if you start to dissociate or get a bit confused, or if you have the idea or OSDD, you start to feel switchy, you have familiar sounds in the background. So you can be like, I know that sound, especially if it's a positive trigger for you to keep you in the front if you do have the idea. There's no such thing as positive triggers. Stop this made up bullshit. I'm just bullshit that there's such a, there's no such thing as positive triggers positive triggers are called nice things just have music on in the background to keep you distracted is what she's saying do you realize by staying grounded do you realize she's saying pay attention oh fuck 
This is how to get raped. When you're having sex, make sure you have something on that you can distract with. Asexual advice to having sex. The asexual's advice to sex. Make sure that you have some music on so that you can distract yourself and pay attention to the sounds instead of the sex. That's how to get... She's actually trying to make people worse, isn't she? She is. Sounds in the background, so you can be like, I know that sound, especially if it's a positive trigger for you to keep you in the front if you do have DID or OSDD, to help avoid other alters switching out during that intimate time. It can help you feel safer because like, I know that song, where am I? Or I know that song, that's a safe song. I'm in a safe place. I'm okay. However, if listening to music or having background noise makes you dissociate, don't, don't have it on in the background. For other people looking... I think nobody tells you about the traffic light system in BDSM but that you learn over time from being on the scene is that they're not necessarily safe words for your partner. The reason having a universal set of safe words in the community is that if you say red, amber or yellow in a space where other people are about, it will draw the attention of witnesses, which is not going to work at all in a private setting. In a private setting, you just make sure you understand each other's boundaries, limits, and understand consent first. Where am I? Well, I know that song. That's a safe song. I'm in a safe place. I'm okay. However, if... If you're dissociating to the point that you forget where you are when you're having sex, and you need a song to snap you back to it, stop having sex. Now. Immediately. I don't want to be fucking a dissociated, lifeless corpse. Most men don't want to. And the men that do are rapists. So if your advice is just dissociate whilst having sex, but stay grounded to the distraction, to the dissociation, that's your advice. You're encouraging women to get raped. You're encouraging men to become rapists. Wow. This might be her all-time lowest. She really should have stayed away from this subject. This might be the most damaging advice she has ever given. If listening to music or having background noise makes you dissociate, don't, don't have it on in the background. Ground. For other people, looking into or recognizing faces can be an issue. If you are in a position where you're face to face with somebody um, and you can't recognize their face, you should stop having sex immediately. Your partner is already triggered, is already dissociating. You need to stop having sex immediately. Do not encourage women to keep having sex in this situation. You're encouraging women to keep having bad sex. Hey, earlier you know how we were saying i was saying like mo most women think they should have bad sex it's because of this it's because of advice like this this is a new age of it though this is the new age it's instead of oh don't worry about it women aren't meant to enjoy sex it's oh don't worry about it if you're not enjoying it just associate just pay attention to the tv or the music just listen to the music, sweetie. Just listen to the music. Don't worry about what's happening. You can't recognize the face in front of you. Just listen to the music. It'll all be over soon. Just how to keep re-traumatizing yourself and make it so that sex is something you can never enjoy. Yeah, they were saying to use a positive trigger to... I'm just going to play it through. Let's just play it through no pauses. Yeah, let's go. This is, this is mad. Uh, music that you know is grounding, that is familiar to you. This might work for you instead. Other things that might help might be music in the background to help keep you grounded. Make sure you've got preset playlists and they don't have to be sexy playlists or whatever. Music that you know is grounding, that is familiar to you. So that if you do start to dissociate or get a bit confused, or if you have the idea of OSDD, you start to feel switchy, you have familiar sounds in the background. So you can be like, I know that sound, especially if it's a positive trigger for you to keep you in the front if you do have the idea of OSDD. Especially if it's a positive trigger for you to keep you in the front.
to help avoid other alters switching out during that intimate time, it can help you feel safer because like, I know that song, where am I? Or I know that song, that's a safe song. I'm in a safe place. I'm okay. However, if you're having all of those thoughts whilst you're having sex with somebody, you're not having sex with them. The socio did. If whilst, you're ha if whilst your body is physically getting fucked, you're thinking, I'm in a safe place. Where am I? I'm in a safe place. What is this? Where am I? I'm in a safe place. I hear music that I know. I'm in a safe place. You're not having sex with your partner in that moment. You're dissociating and your partner is fucking a body. That's all. This is really grim advice. This is encouraging women to get raped. If listening to music or having background noise makes you dissociate, don't, don't have it on in the background. For other people, looking into or recognizing faces can be an issue. If you are in a position where you're face to face with somebody, um, hold up. I'm telling you, it's normal to have reactions to stuff. Grounding. You want to know about grounding, by the way? We have so many videos on them. Um, I'll link them in the description box below. Yeah, uh, if you're a, if you're in a position where you're face to face with somebody, if you start to dissociate or start to get triggered, I know that for us, one of the first senses to go is sight, and it might get quite blurry. And if it does get quite blurry, and you're in a triggered state, your memories might start superimposing. body wash or whatever that smells really strong that you associate with them, have them put it on before you go into the bedroom. That way, hopefully, you should be surrounded by this grounding smell that you're familiar with, that you associate with safety. So even if you're- Have your partner put on the same aftershave that your daddy wore when he- <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I need to stop watching. This is big. <sighs> no, that wasn't her advice just then. Her advice was actually- Ask your partner to shower before you have sex. <sighs> Other senses start to go. That should help bring you back or at least keep you out of a really triggered space visually. Another thing would be wear bright colors, things that would be recognizable even if your eyesight starts to go very blurry. That could be them wearing something in their hair. If you have a partner who wears makeup, maybe some bright makeup eyeshadow or something like that. If they have jewellery, maybe some interesting or brightly coloured or unique jewellery that would be easy for you to identify even if you're feeling a little bit out of it. And if you are feeling a little bit out of it, just make sure your partner's wearing jewellery. Just don't have sex when you're not associated. Why don't you encourage your audience to tell their partner no if they're feeling out of it? Why are you fuck? If you're feeling out of it, you're dissociating and if you're feeling out of it and if you're not feeling 100% as somebody with sexual trauma who this video is aimed for physical intimacy after sexual trauma and abuse you with somebody with sexual trauma if you are not feeling 100 you need to stop that's all that's the advice done feeling a little bit out of it you can use yeah go to therapy work on other aspects of your life until you're ready to have that sexual relationship with somebody Done. Interesting or brightly coloured or unique jewellery that would be easy for you to identify even if you're feeling a little bit out of it. And if you are feeling a little bit out of it, you can use yellow. Take a break, check in, have some water, ground. Yellow doesn't mean stop. If you are feeling out of it, you can use yellow, which means keep going, just not as hard. Keep going, just do something else. Yellow doesn't mean stop. Red means stop. Yellow means keep going. If, you, if you're feeling out of it, your partner's fucking you really hard. You're feeling a bit out of it and you say yellow. He's going to pull his dick out and start eating your pussy, right? He's not going to stop. He's going to pull it out of your pussy and shove it in your mouth is what he's going to do. That's what Andrew Callahan did when that chick said, oh, I don't want it like this. He didn't hear stop. He heard not in the pussy, in the mouth. You say yellow to a guy that's fucking you. Instead of coming inside you, he'll come on your tits. That's the difference there. 
Holy shit. She just did it. She just did the thing. She just did it. She should have said red. Remember, you don't have to carry on. You don't have to push through it. You don't owe anybody this. You don't owe anybody anything. And also the goal of physical intimacy shouldn't necessarily- This should have been the first bit of advice. Be, oh, well, it's not over until somebody has a happy ending. No, you're in it for the experience to be with each other in a safe and enjoyable and pleasurable way. Who gives a fuck if there's I agree, no I agree. You're not in it for the orgasm ultimately, but you sound like an asexual loser who shouldn't be giving sex advice as well. Happy ending, finish yourself off, you know? What's important right now is your safety, okay? You do not owe anybody anything. You are not a tool or a toy for someone else's use for them to get their happy ending. This is as yeah, much about- Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. But also, what if your part? Well, that sounds shitty to your partner if- You've not talked to them about this beforehand. About you as it is about them. You do not have to serve anyone anymore. If you feel uncomfortable, if you're starting to dissociate, you can stop whenever you want to. Even if you feel like, oh, I don't mind. It'll be over soon. I can care. You don't have to do that anymore. No one will think badly of you. You're not going to be punished for it. You don't have to do that anymore. You don't have to be their sex slave anymore. Shut up. You can stop. Only do it if it's... Inconsistency with boundaries around physical advice, physical intimacy for people that may have sexual trauma. What the fuck is this? Yeah. She hasn't once talked about consent. She hasn't said the word. It's nice for you. She hasn't said the word no, really. Sometimes that might take a few tries. Sometimes it might take a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a couple of years. Sometimes... Oh, maybe she's the person that dissociates when she tries to say no or stop. Maybe she was talking about herself. Some people don't like intimacy at all or are sex repulsed. That's okay too. Nah, disagree. They're broken. There's something wrong with them. It's not. It's okay because of how many human beings exist. But it does mean there's something a bit wrong with you. It's for you. That's... Sometimes that might take a few tries. Sometimes it might take a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a couple of years. Sometimes it takes the right partner. Sometimes you can only do it by yourself. That's... If you don't have a drive to reproduce, if you don't have a drive to fuck at least but uh, even gay people still want to reproduce this thing gay people might want to be, be be attracted to the 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 wrong uh bit of genitalia in terms of reproduction but how many gay people still want to reproduce and have kids most of them actually load ev like people want to fucking fuck and make baby even the gays even the trans even the lesbians everybody still wants to fuck and make baby if you don't want to fuck and make baby if you don't want to fuck, not as if you don't want to make baby, fair enough. But if you don't, if you don't want to make baby, if you don't want to fuck, if you don't want to, f if you don't want to do either of those two, something wrong with you. You should want to do one of the two. That's okay. You should either want to fuck, or you should want baby, or you should want both. And if you want neither, there is something wrong with you. Yeah. Okay. It's not worth putting yourself through something that's going to re-traumatize you if it doesn't feel good. It's supposed to feel happy, not just physically good. If you don't feel happy, forget what your body is reacting to. Your body can give you positive sensations because the right buttons are being pressed. That doesn't mean that you're enjoying it. It doesn't mean you're happy. Oh, God. And now she's getting onto the most triggering subject of all for rape victims. Yes, dissociated. We all get it. Why is this like the talking point at the moment? Has the world, like, just realised that rape vic like women can orgasm during rape? Is this, like, a new bit of information that everyone is just finding out or something? It seems to be coming up every fucking week at the moment. Okay. If you associate... I thought everybody knew this. Certain things with... Like... Abusers. Request that for this. If you associate <sighs> certain things... Remove triggers, identify and remove similarities. Okay, so if your partner looks like the person who raped you, make sure they stop looking like the person who raped you. Easy. With abusers, request that for this experience, your partner removes them. So like I spoke about piercings before, let's say your abuser had piercings, like I don't know, a nose piercing, an eyebrow piercing or whatever, and your partner at the time now also has one request they take it out if you want to just in case that kind of super nah, thing is even trip even incels don't do that anymore because you know like 
I actually know they do. No, I won't. No. Yeah, they Transposing do. confusion happens. You want there to be as much difference between then and now as possible. I'd also recommend having recognizable objects and colors nearby. So that could be, for example, you turn your head, you're going to see something really recognizable that you know is safe and yours that will give you context clues as to where you are. That what if you have PTSD, trauma, and the first time you're going to fuck your partner or somebody? What if you want to fuck somebody and you want to fuck them in a different country? And that's going to be your first time hooking up. What if both of you do? What then, dissociated? You wouldn't be able to give advice on that, would you? You don't have a fucking clue. Even though you've been in that exact same situation once upon a time, you actually wouldn't be able to give any advice on it. I do believe she's asexual now. She is clueless. She is talking like every asexual dumbass fucking teenager online ever giving sex advice. This is obnoxious. That's what you want. You can also what up, hairy bums? learn what you've associated with something bad. It doesn't always have to be touch. It can be words, it can be phrases, it can be noises, it can be the level of noise. Like I said earlier, some people react really badly to gentleness. Some people can only do rough. For some people, it's the complete opposite. They need gentleness, they need softness, they need love, they need to feel appreciated and loved. And you can make someone feel appreciated and loved and still be rough and physically hard. You just need to know what you're doing and check in with the person. Right, literally, this is teenage ace shit. It is, OMG. What up, Peggy? Oh, this has been murder, Peggy. We're right at the end. Um, Honestly, oh God, this would really piss you off, mate. This would have really, this has been the most disgustingly awful advice when it comes to physical intimacy after sexual trauma and abuse that I've ever heard. Not once has she talked about consent. She hasn't talked about consent. She started off talking about the traffic light system for safe words. The f she hasn't talked about consent. Person, what do they need? What do they want? Communicate. Communicate with your partner, please. For love of God, don't assume what your partner needs. Also, don't assume what you need. Listen to yourself. Listen to your body. If you have alters, listen to your alters. Okay. Even if they're not going to be there, they might. No, know. she is recommending BDSM. She is. I'll go. I'll, I'll replay the start for those of you who missed it. To be honest, we'll replay the first five minutes in a sec. We'll get to the end and then we'll replay the first five minutes because it was fucked. It's all okay, fucked. Okay. Well, if this happens, it's going to trigger me out. I don't want to be there. Okay. The amount of times I was triggered out as Nina. I mean, it was my job. I get triggered out and you know, just carry on because I'm there now. So it's what I'm supposed to do type thing. But you know, if you notice that happening, just pay attention to the music in the room. The advice so far has consisted of um, dry hump your partner non-sexually fully clothed to figure out what might be a trigger physically. Listen to music so that when you're having sex, you have something to focus on so that you can stay focused on the music. When you don't recognize your partner's face and you're dissociating, make sure they wear brightly colored jewelry. Make sure your partner's wearing jewelry that's brightly colored so that you recognize them when you don't even recognize their face. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway. <laughs> Right, <laughs> yeah, this isn't about me. <laughs> if you want to hear about my experiences, I can make a video on my experiences, you know, things I've learned, how I learned, you know, what's safe and what's not, and talk you through it as a trauma survivor. Wait, what a minute this was about. Why did she just say this isn't about her? And, you know, just carry on because I'm there now, so it's what I'm supposed to do type thing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, <laughs> right, it, <laughs> yeah, this isn't about me. <laughs> if you want to hear about my experiences, I can make a video on my experiences, you know, things I've learned, how I learned, you know, what's safe and what's not, and talk you through it as a trauma survivor. Again, not going into anything intense or specific or sexy. It won't be in a sexy way. As you can tell, I don't see the point in it being like, ooh, hush, hush, oh my God, she's talking about sex. It's like, so, so what? I'm also going to do a video on hypersexuality and asexuality. If nobody wants this, if this is not helpful, I will not make another video. If it is helpful, because I am honestly horrified and shocked at the lack of video. I don't think I've ever seen a video like this, where it's like, you've been traumatized by this. She always has you a safe on a wall. Dude, that's in there in most of our videos. I've pointed Here's how out. you can yeah. do it now in a healthy way and not get traumatized by it, not get triggered by it, and reclaim that part of your life. Because if you want to do that, you should be able to- No, you're talking about how to get- oh, fuck me. To do that without, you know, having to go through it by yourself. You know, you've got someone guiding you. Some, something, just something. Just rambling so you now. know you're not alone. Right, and it's possible. It's rambling now, isn't it? Kind I think that's it for me today. Yeah. If any of this was helpful.
Tip two, safe words. Tip two is safe words. For play or rough housing, or if it's just vanilla. So many people assume that safe words are only needed or used for rough sex or BDSM or pre negotiated scenes. That's not true. If communicating something is difficult for you or a challenge for you, safe words are a great way to be able to get that. Yeah. No, Trip, you are so right. That's exactly how Mr. Go, that's Mr. Girl's entire debate tack. That's how Mr. Girl does it. He's like, I set this boundary. My boundary is that if you don't let me anally rape you without consent, you are ethically and morally and mentally violating me. You saying no to letting me double dick you down in the arse is literally raping me. My boundary, my boundary is that you will let me do whatever I want to you. And you Want to negotiate that boundary with me? How dare you? That's abusive as shit. You are literally raping me right now. That's how it goes. Yeah. Information across with one or two words, even if you're in a triggered state, even if you're in a flashback sometimes, one word is all you need to remember and your partner will immediately know upon hearing it what it means, how you're feeling. Even if you're in a flashback, just use your safe word. what to do next and how to keep you safe and also the level of urgency that's required some people who've experienced things like this immediately go into a dissociative state when they need to use the word no or stop some people feel extreme guilt for saying no or stop some and to that i said earlier if you immediately go into a dissociative state when you're trying to say the words no or stop you're a retarded child and you shouldn't be having sex that's it if you cannot say no, if you cannot say stop, then you are going to make a man into a rapist. And I don't want you having sex with people because I blame you. This advice you are giving is so fucking damaging and dangerous because you are victimizing not just women, but men as well. And by that, I mean, you are turning men into rapists with this advice by giving women the advice that if they cannot say stop, if they cannot say no, that they should still be having sex. You are encouraging women who cannot say stop, who cannot say no, to go out there and get raped in the process, making their boyfriends who probably aren't rapists at heart now guilty of that crime guilty of that burden on that soul on their soul because you were too fucking bone idle and stupid to give good advice it's so damaging it's so dangerous thank you so much for watching loungers don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe even leave a comment you fucking asshole